Now I'm going to take you through the restoration of an analog magnetic tape recording. Now some of the challenges that we're going to encounter are going to be similar to the restoration of vinyl. So I'm going to show you how to apply all of those same techniques. So let's go into the file menu and I'm going to choose this recording of a friend of mine's dad playing saxophone. And this is from a very old, uh, some sort of tape recorder. I'm not sure if it was open reel or a cassette or not. But let's take a listen to the before. So certainly we have some hum removal to take care of. There's some popping and cracking and scratching. And then there's just a generous amount of tape hiss. So let's use some of the modules to get to work on this particular audio recording. And we're going to go through the same sort of methodology. We're going to get rid of the things that are the most obvious first. So to my ear, the thing that's bothering me the most right now is the clicking and the scratching. Let's take a listen again from about this point on. Now the clicking is not really of a high frequency like you'd find with vinyl recordings, so let's keep that in mind as we load up the D-click and D-crackle module. Then I'm going to go to the D-click mode, and let's try a few different settings. Let's try just the single band algorithm to start with, and then we'll set the sensitivity on 3, which is the default, and the click type is going to be a click, and then I'm going to make a selection of audio right here. Then click the compare button, and that will load those settings into our compare settings window. And then let's change a few settings that we can audition. So instead of using the single band algorithm, let's use the random clicks, and I'm going to increase the sensitivity a bit here. And then the frequency skew, I'm actually going to have it look a little bit further at the low frequencies, because these aren't really high frequency pops and clicks like we find with vinyl. And then I'm going to increase the click widening just a little bit. And then let's hit the compare button. That will load those settings into the compare settings window. And now let's audition each of those. Here's the original audio again. Let's try the first setting. And that's not taking away as many as I would really want. So let's try the second settings. So since those second settings did a better job at removing that style of clicking, I'm going to make sure that I take those settings selected in the compare settings window and then close the window and then do a controller command A to select that entire audio file and then click the process button. That will go through and get rid of those clicks. Now there's a certain amount of scratchiness on the recording as well, so I'm going to take that same section right about here, and I'm going to go into the decrackle mode, and then let's try a few different settings. The normal strength of 5 with a quality setting of high is going to be our first choice, so let's hit the compare button, that will load those settings, and then let's try an even more aggressive setting. We're going to have the amplitude skew look at the quieter sections of the recording, and then increase the strength by quite a bit. And then let's load those settings into the compare settings. So we'll hit compare. And now let's preview each one of those settings. So here's the original audio. Here's the first setting. That's not really doing what I want it to do. Let's try the second settings. That sounds quite a bit better. Let's try a third set of settings. So I'm going to increase the amplitude skew this time and then hit the compare button and see what that might do for us. So here's the new settings. Wow, that's done a really nice job of getting rid of that crackle. So I'm going to click those settings, then close the compare settings window, then do a controller command A to select that entire audio file and hit the process button. That will go through and decrackle that entire audio file. 
Now, the next thing I'm hearing is some hum and even some rumble. Let's take a look at that. I'm going to close the D-click and D-crackle module. Then I'm going to change the frequency scale a bit here so that we're looking at just the low frequencies. I'm going to get really picky about this. So I'm going to make a few adjustments by adjusting my mouse wheel here on the scale so I can really come down to these low frequencies and see them in the spectrogram. Now some of this is 60 cycle hum. So here's 60 cycles and you can see a line going right through the audio file here. But there's another really much louder hum right here at about 120 hertz. We'll deal with that in a moment because there's definitely some 60 cycle hum here. And then at the very bottom there's some rumble. This is extreme subharmonic rumble. And so we're going to get rid of that as well. So I'm going to make a selection that doesn't include that upper harmonic hum, and I'm just going to capture the 60 cycle hum. So with that small selection, I'm going to come to the remove hum module, and let's have it learn that particular frequency. So I'm going to click learn, and it's going to find that that particular frequency is 60.34 hertz. So I'm going to use that setting. I'm going to double click the filter cue so that it really narrows that filter down. And I'm going to have it remove about 60 dB. And then I'm going to add a few harmonics because you can see that at the 60 hertz, it does start to have some harmonics above that fundamental frequency. So let's have it remove four harmonics. And then I'm also going to employ the high pass filter to get rid of that rumble. But I'm going to set a more aggressive setting because there just isn't a lot of energy in this recording below about 40 hertz. So I'm going to set the high pass filter frequency at 40. Then I'm going to do a controller command A to select that entire audio file and hit the process button. That will go through and get rid of the 60 cycle hum and all of that rumbling sort of frequency at the bottom. So let's take a listen to that now. <laughs> So it's gotten rid of the 60 cycle AC hum, but there's still another type of hum in there. That's going to be a little bit harder to get rid of. So I'm going to close the remove hum window, and I'm going to change the frequency scale again by rolling down with my mouse wheel here so that I can really zero in on those frequencies. And I'm also going to just look at the spectrogram. And when I do, you'll notice that it starts at a higher frequency and then slopes down. This is a very, very common occurrence with analog tape recordings where the tape machine itself will speed up and slow down dependent on a variety of factors, including how much voltage is coming out of the wall. And therefore, the frequencies that are on the tape will wow and flutter. So what I'm going to do to get rid of this particular type of hum is just kind of guess that it is between about 125 and 120 hertz. Let's really change that frequency scale quite a bit. So I'm going to really zoom up on it here with my mouse wheel and take a look at those frequencies. And we can see that over here, we can see that they start at about 125 hertz. And I'm making that determination by moving my mouse to the top part of that band and looking in the lower right-hand corner of the RX3 window you can see that it's 124.1 hertz. And then if I move my mouse down to where the bottom part of that frequency is, so I'm going to drag over here, you can see that it's about 119 hertz. So I'm going to make a selection using a frequency select tool, and I'm going to make it right through this range. And then I'm going to go into the remove hum module, and I'm going to make some very specific settings. I'm going to set the notch frequency to 123 hertz, because that's, well, actually, let's see, it was between 119 and 124, so let's go with 122 hertz. And then I'm going to really drop that filter cue down, because it's a fairly wide swath that I want it to take through that selection. So I'm going to set the filter cue at 198, and I'm going to disable that high-pass filter. And I don't need to remove any harmonics, so I'm just going to select one of those harmonic ranges, which will get the fundamental. And I'm really going to drop the volume of that frequency down. So I'm going to drag that gain all the way down to minus 79.8. And then I'm going to do a controller command A to select the entire audio file. And then I'm going to click the process button. 
and it's going to go through and get rid of that hum, but it's a little bit too high a frequency. You can see that I didn't quite have it set high enough, so I'm going to hit Ctrl or Command Z to get that back, and then I'm going to raise the notch frequency up to about 122, 123. Let's try that. Let's hit Process. That will go through. That did a much better job of going through that entire range to remove all of that hum. So I'm going to double click on the frequency scale here, and that got rid of a lot of that band of hum. So now let's listen to the recording. <laughs> So that hum is now gone. In fact, all of that hum is gone. So now that we've got that removed, the last thing to do is to remove the tape hiss. So the thing that we're going to have the hardest time doing is finding the quiet area in this recording that has the hiss from which we can create that fingerprint. So let's take a listen to the beginning of the file here. <laughs> Now we can't really take the sample there because there's some talking in the background. Listen carefully. So that's not going to be a very good acoustic fingerprint. So let's try the end of the file, right about here. Oh, that's a much better place. So I'm going to use my time selection tool and mark this area and then use this tool to zoom in on it. I'm going to really refine how much of a fingerprint we're going to take. See that little bump right there? I don't want to get that because that bump may represent frequencies that we don't want to get rid of. So I'm going to make sure that my selection doesn't have that little bump. In fact, there's another little bump right here. So this is going to be my acoustic fingerprint. So with that selection made, I'm going to go to the denoise module and in spectral mode and manual mode, I'm going to have it learn that fingerprint. And then I'm going to choose the best quality. And the artifact control I'm going to set at the default of 7. And then let's do a preview, but I'm going to do a controller command A to select the entire audio file and then hit preview. <laughs> Now I can hear a little bit of the, uh, those musical artifacts, so I'm going to move that artifact control over to a more aggressive setting like 9. And let's listen to it before by hitting the bypass button. Wow, that sounds a lot better. So let's hit stop. Then I'm going to do a controller command A to make sure I have the entire audio file selected and then hit the process button. This will take a little bit of time because we're using some very, very aggressive settings in the denoise module. But then when it's done, we're going to close the denoise module and I'm going to hit this little button to get us back to the entire view of the audio file and then hit controller command D to deselect. And now we can listen to the before and the after. So let's go to the initial state in the undo list and listen to the before and the after. So what we end up with is a much cleaner and more modern sounding recording, something that doesn't have a lot of stuff in it that really detracts from what we want to hear in the recording, in this case, the saxophone. And in the next section, we're going to talk about the spectral repair module.